What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Lineage OS based on Android 12. Let me show you which build this is. So from here you can see this is the Lineage OS version 19 unofficial build as of now based on Android 12 and the build date here is of 13th October 2021. And of course you can download it from the description as well i'll put all the links all the important links and stuff and if you don't know how to flash this ROM, you can check out the description as well again or you can check out the cards you can find the flashing guide but the flashing procedure is pretty simplistic if you're moving from a custom rom just wipe cache dalvik system data and vendor then first flash the 12.0.5 miui firmware then flash the rom and then flash the ftrip disabler version 3 after that you can just simply reboot of course, I have used the Orange Fox recovery over here. I'll put the exact version on the left side or somewhere. And huge thanks to all the developers who have done uh, amazing work on this particular ROM and all the upcoming Android 12 ROMs, which will be there for all the devices like the Note 7 Pro, K20 Pro and the Redmi Note 10 Pro, etc. I'll be covering them or I'll be trying to cover them. But let me show you or let me explain my experience over here with this ROM. Now after I flashed it, it straight up booted into the system. It did not ask me for any setup wizard. File size of this particular ROM is about 1.2 GB or 1.1 something GB I guess. As you can see it has the stretchiness kind of effect and swiping up gets you to this app drawer. Of course it does include the play services and the Google Play Store right out of the box. So G apps is included but it does not include some of the key apps of Google like YouTube is not included, Chrome is not included. Also, this Google app or the Google Assistant is not included in this particular ROM. You have to download them from the Play Store. Also, one more thing that I have been noticing over here is that the stock clock looks like this on this particular ROM. This is pretty much the Lineage OS clock. Also, there is the stock dialer which looks like this. And as you can see, this is how it looks like. Also, in the messaging app, this is how it looks like. So, these are the stock apps. But I have also tried to download the Google clock app but in there it does not have the newer kind of clock ui as you can see this is still the android 11 kind of clock ui but let me show you here the stock calculator of lineage OS looks like this when i downloaded the google calculator this has the new ui as you can see this is of course the newer kind of ui and it does give you the haptic feedback and stuff once you're typing or doing these kind of gestures and you can see the animations looks very beautiful this calculator app the google calculator app is actually working with this new ui but you have to download these separately the stock launcher is the quick step launcher let me show you if i go into here and then as you can see this is the quick step launcher present by default also if you are seeing the recent panel this is how it looks like now i have one complaint regarding this recent panel that here it does not have those screenshot option or clear all option you have to clear all from all the way to the left from like this but i am pretty much missing the screenshot option over here because if i want to take a screenshot i have to press the volume down and the power button together then only i can take a screenshot i just noticed this thing that once you are taking a screenshot with the volume down and the power button it shows you this animation and it shows you this option which says capture mode if you click on this capture mode let me actually show you it looks like this and once you do that you can expand the screenshot or take a long screenshot just like this whatever is there in your screen or you can go to edit then you can edit and like do some effects with whatever like app that you are using or you can rotate the screenshot somehow or you can crop it up if you want to so yeah all these options you get from right here once you're taking a screenshot but of course there is no three finger screenshot gesture or you can't really do it from the recent panel which is a bummer now in this particular stock launcher if you double tap anywhere in the home screen it doesn't do anything and swiping to the left side it doesn't do anything either there is a search option but if i click on it as you can see it opens the google search bar so yeah and if you want to swipe up this is how it looks like you can also search for any particular app that you have downloaded now once you're scrolling up it looks a little weird if you're noticing on the top i have been noticing this on this particular launcher on this quick step launcher by the way as you can see it looks very weird but yeah this is a initial kind of unofficial build so yeah i don't expect too much here let me jump into the settings this is how it looks like yes it looks beautiful if i go into the about section in the android version over here we have the android version as android 12 of course and if you make the clock up to like this 12 o'clock it still has that kind of easter egg as you can see of android 12 looks very beautiful i would say let me go back we have the security patch of latest of october 5th 2021 and here's the baseband version and the stock kernel is this azure these 
Demons plus kernel. In the system panel, it does have a system updater, but I'm not really sure if this will work. And here, let me show you if you want to see the stock keyboard, the AOSP keyboard is present as the stock keyboard. But if you want to install the Gboard or something like that, you can definitely install those. In the gestures, there are these quickly open camera. Yes, the quickly open camera does work. And we have the system navigation gestures. You can use the full screen navigation gestures or the two button and three button navigation gestures. In the settings, we have this swipe to invoke assistant. Then the left edge, right edge customization. And here we also have this one handed mode. You can enable it if you want to from right here. So right now, as you can see, the one handed mode is perfectly working. But the problem is with this press and hold power button. As you can see, this option was turned on. This hold for assistant was turned on. But once I turned it off, if I like keep holding the power button, it does not even show me the power menu here. That is a little weird that I can't see the power menu even when this feature is turned off. And if I turn it on, as you can see, it kind of invokes Google Assistant. But as you can see, it doesn't appear. So that's how it is. So to access actually the power menu, I have to do it from the quick setting panel from here. If I tap here, I can access the power menu from right here. But I cannot really press and hold the power button to actually access the power menu. Right now, let me just go back to the home screen and let me show you a couple more things like the stock camera. Well, here we have this kind of camera and it has this kind of icon once you're opening a camera. And yes, they are working perfectly fine. If my voice sounds weird because I have cold, please don't mind my voice as of right now. But yeah, the stock camera is this one and it does work. Let me take a quick picture. And as you can see, I just took a picture and it does work. Let me show you the details. 12 megapixel photo, I guess. And this is how it came out to be. So this is not too bad, I would say, but this is a very basic kind of stock camera that you get over here. So I have installed a Gcam Go, the version one. And with this also the front camera and stuff, everything is working. Let me take a portrait picture. So this is how the picture looks like. I would say it looks decent, not bad at all. And here, let me check out the info. And this is again a 12 megapixel photo. So yeah, the camera is actually working fine. No issues even with the Google camera and stuff. And if you go into the video, as you can see, still it works fine. And with the rear camera as well, the video should be working fine, no issues. So yeah, camera situation is not too good, but of course you can use definitely third party cameras like Google Camera Go, that should work totally fine. Except for that, opening up apps are still fine. As you can see, all the apps that I'm opening are staying in memory. So memory management should not be a huge issue here. Now the widgets in the home screen are working fine. You can add and edit widgets, but there is a problem that like, even if you have the Google clock downloaded, there is no newer kind of clock widget over here, which we used to get with the Android 12 ports or ported ROMs. Those kind of things are simply missing. Also from the ported ROMs, I am seeing a difference here that while I'm plugging in the device, it does not do that charging animation where you just plug it in and it shows that Android 12 kind of flow over here, like a flow animation that is simply not happening over here. Some more things like if the IR Bluster is actually working fine, the IR Bluster actually works perfectly fine here. No issues whatsoever with the IR Bluster. But sadly, the safety net simply fails. But definitely you can use Magisk and use Magisk Hype to actually use the banking apps. But I'm not really sure I have tested that. But right out of the box at least, safety net does not pass sadly as of right now. Talking about the DRM info, it stays L1 as you can see from right here. So streaming 1080p Netflix or Amazon Prime videos should not be a huge issue here. Now here are the Android 2 and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. Right now let me show you the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like. Of course, we still have this brightness slider. Also the Monet theme engine is not really working over here, I guess, because even though I have the stock wallpaper, it has a little bit of cyan look, but in the settings, I don't see a cyan kind of hue over here. So I think that is not working. Even if you go into the wallpaper settings, this is how it looks like. There is no Monet kind of engine. So by default or right out of the box, you don't get that as of right now. Maybe we will be getting those in the future updates. But as of right now, the Monet kind of engine is not working. Also, a few more things like in the battery settings, there is no battery percentage enabling option here. So you have to stick with this kind of icon and you don't see the battery percentage until and unless you swipe down from the quick setting panel and there you see the battery percentage. So yeah. And we have the big kind of battery. And if you want to see the full usage, this is how it looks like. We also have the screen on time right here. I'm not really sure if this is perfect, but yeah, screen time over here shows up. As you can see, used for 47 minutes here it shows. 
Let me go back, we have the battery server right here. The battery manager, if I click on it, the settings is force close for some reason. And here we have the sound settings. If you go here, we have this media call, etc. volume control. By the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. You can adjust the volume from right here. Or if you want to expand this and you can like have all these volume panels just like this. And we have some more things like the phone ringtone and stuff you can change from right here. There we have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, charging sound, etc. Or the charging vibration, you can change those stuff from right here. And we also have this touch vibration enabling or disabling option. The haptic feedback I'm liking on this particular ROM, no issues whatsoever. But there is no me audio direct as of right now, of course. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the brightness level. The adaptive or auto brightness is working fine. In the lock screen, we have this wake screen for notification and the show device controls option. Then let me go back. We have the screen timeout adjustment and then the dark theme is there. If you enable the dark theme, this is how it looks like. It's not pitch black or something. This is gray. I can see that. So yeah, and if you want to see the dark theme settings, this is how it looks like. You can schedule it. But of course, there is no pitch black kind of setting option right here. Now we have the font size, the display size and the night light. And of course, you can change the night light intensity if you want to. Let me go back. We have the colors option, but it has no options over here. And we have the auto roll screen and the double tap to wake is there. And let me show you right now the fingerprint scanner speed or here I can just double tap. As you can see, this is how the lock screen looks like. It looks very, very beautiful. It has this big kind of lock screen clock and it jumps around. But of course, when I plug in the device with the charger, it does not give you that animation, but that's fine, I guess. Now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed. Once I tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see how fast it unlocks. Just notice the fingerprint scanner speed. Also, again, there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen, but there is double tap to wake here and that is working fine as you can see. But if I double tap here on the status bar, it does not actually like make the phone sleep. So actually put the phone into sleep, you have to like press the power button. And again, the fingerprint scanner speed is completely fine. I have no complaints with the fingerprint scanner speed here. It is perfectly fast considering this is a very early Android 12 ROM. Again, talking about the quick setting panel, you can edit and add multiple toggles over here. You can have all these extra dim, dark theme, etc. options. You can drag and drop right here, just like this, as you can see. And we have these many options. All the options almost are working perfectly fine. We have this internet that is working perfectly fine too. And the flashlight and stuff, as you can see, is working fine. We also have the screen recorder. You can have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time. So yeah, if you ask me personally, should you go with this ROM? It is in very early stage in my opinion. But yes, this Lineage OS has the Lineage OS basic apps, like the Lineage OS dialer, the like Lineage OS recorder and stuff. As you can see, there is the sound recorder. So yeah, this is very good that we have all these options. But this is a very early kind of build, I would say. Still unofficial, of course. So you can definitely try it out if you want to. But it definitely lacks some features of Android 12. Even the basic Android 12 ported ROMs had more features than this, in my personal opinion. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And this was the Lineage OS 19 unofficial build. And that was my impressions about this particular ROM. Please share this video with your friends if you feel like. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.